This is a baby Great Lakes and it's tiny. Like this paperwork weighs as about as much as that airplane does. Let's check it out. This little airplane was donated in 1999, 24 years ago. First time it's been outside since. Let me just read you some stats on this bad boy. Stepping into the airplane, you can't see its tiny stature. It's shorty gear and oversized vertical tail, oversized. It's a scaled down version of a Great Lakes 2T-1 designed in the mid 50s. It's so small that it only takes one step from the tarmac into the cockpit. One step. Yep. Built specifically for aerobatics. Not kidding. It has an unexpected high performance speedster, can be airborne in five seconds from a dead stop. And at a climb rate of 2,000 feet per minute, that's more than my Lance Air. The airframe is stressed for nine Gs, FYI, more than an F-14 Tomcat and an F-A-18 Hornet. That's insane! It's home built, meaning you buy the plans or buy the kit stuff and then you build it in your garage. Uh, yeah, and it takes about 1,600 hours to build is what they say. Well, I happen to know the gentleman who donated this took him 27 years to build it. Let that sink in for a minute. Uh, his name was, uh, I'll just call him Earl, out of uh, Washington, just north of us. He's been flying since 1947. Man, amazing. And he started building it in 1970, nine years before I was born. It neared completion in 1996 when Earl was injured in a, in a car crash, actually. And he was unable to fly it. It's actually kind of sad. Uh, asked his friend, his name was Buck, uh, to fly it. And on the morning of August 12th, 1997, this plane made its first and only flight at 5.35 a.m. And here's a note from that logbook entry. It says, good, but a little quick. One flight? I mean, it does look like it hasn't been flown. That is amazing. And then only a year and a half later, he donated it to the Evergreen Air and Space Museum here in McMinnville, Oregon. He finished it in 97, donated it in 99, and we're pulling it out for the first time since then, 24 years later. So this might only be, what, the second time? that this airplane maybe not ever started, but that is amazing. But it looks like a lot of engine for a small plane. And it's got an end number, which tells me it's not an ultralight. So this, you have to have a license to fly it, and it's built for aerobatics. Let's check it out and see what we got. First thing you'll notice, wooden propeller with metal guard here, yeah. 2,600 RPM, superior, that's pretty neat. I'm seeing inside some pretty big cylinders that start here. I'm assuming there's only two because it goes back quite a bit there. That would make sense for a small airplane like this. Definitely not Volkswagen. Uh, okay, whatever two cylinder thing that is. Sprung suspension, nice. Some rods. Of course, I mean, the way it's built, it is built really, really well. It's definitely better than, say, that little Jenny over there. Uh, I mean, that's the Lance Air. Oh, that's so pretty. And I'll be flying that one very soon. We're going to haul it back to Florida. We're going to, we got to pull the wings off, haul it back to Florida, go through it really, really good, replace quite a few usable parts on it because it's been 20 years since it's been outside or been started and we're going to be flying that one again that weird thing 
a museum. It's a Bert Rutan. Apparently lives around here somewhere. So they were keeping that because that was kind of one of his uh, his babies right there. So I don't know what the museum is doing with that. They're selling the Jenny, getting rid of that thing, and I bought the glass hair over there. So that's pretty neat. My understanding is they're selling this one too because they have to make room in there for an F-117 stealth fighter. How cool is that? Okay, back here. I mean, it's, this thing is, this, this is built really stout. And it's all normal stuff. Man, look at the size of the ailerons on that too. Look at, that is much bigger. These ailerons, these ailerons are bigger than the ones on the Lance Air by a lot. Whoa. Okay, here's comparison. My hand down there, and you got quite a bit. Now, if we go over to the Lance Air. Okay, so here is the aileron on this one. That shows you <laughs> just how big the ailerons are on this little tiny airplane compared to even the Lance Air, which is already a small airplane. It's got normal controls on it. Yep, normal. All the stuff is just normal. I, I'm digging it. Let's see what we got here. All right, altitude, that's good. Oil pressure, compass, airspeed, temp, oil temp, RPMs. Uh, six hours is what I'm guessing is on that engine. It's amazing. Oh, that could be a problem. We do not have keys for it and I couldn't find any keys in the file. Hmm, that, that might be a problem. We might have to hotwire this thing. An aluminum gas tank. Good, good sign. Throttle in the normal place. Mixture cut off. Okay, I'm digging it. I don't know what that is. Oh, oh, that's the primer. I know what that is. Okay, so that's the primer. Carb heat, like all of this is normal stuff. I really like it. This airplane could be one that I would consider flying. Behind the seat there, nothing. Wood, it's metal, it's got a, a metal frame on it. As you can see here, it goes around and that's metal bar there and it's got some wooden little substructures to it for the rib things there. And then it's fabric and the fabric Granted, we know that it's 1997, 96. It's been inside the museum. Looks really, really cool. Dude, I, I'm honest with you, I really like this thing. Yes, I like it. It's just spunky, that's what it is. Got some spunkiness to it. As I'm digging through the file, this little mini blueprint here is awesome, but take a look at this right here. Empty weight, 480 pounds, and it's powered, on this one, is powered by a Continental 80 horsepower engine. So just, just do some math real quick. 480 pounds divided by 80 horsepower is a lot. That's a lot of horsepower for such a small light airplane. Found this very cool article in the Columbia Basin Herald. 1999, that's the man there. Well done, Earl. You've built a fantastic little airplane. And here's all the logs for it as well. That is super neat. 1971, oh my goodness. 1972, wings recovered with grade A cotton, four coats of nitrate, okay. Oh. 1994, found it safe for flight. Find this required for certification has begun in 1994. And first flight, here we go. 5.35 a.m., runway 32, right by Buckwheat. Flight uh, characteristics, I think is what that says. Good, but a little quick, a little tail heavy. Needs adjustment of elevator trim. 1970, Continental A75 overhaul. 
So I think it just sat overhauled for 10, no, that's 1970 again. That was the hours. And then 1997, examine mags, points, and 97 for the first flight. Wow. Yeah, there's only six hours on that engine. But the overhaul, granted, was done in 1970. Very cool. Here, if you've ever wondered, construction manual for the Baby Lakes airplane. And uh, it's not that thick, if I'm honest with you. Page one, page 70. And it says, this is an awesome airplane. Good luck and don't die. And then you got the blueprints here. Oh, come on. Oh, these are the actual blueprints. Hold on. This is the blueprints just for the exhaust. How cool is that? Right there. Ah. Oh, oh, there's lots more blueprints. Oh, these are really big blueprints. Whoa, oh, come on. This would be the coolest stinking poster wall mount thing ever. Okay, that was a man's dream. That's a man's reality. Let's, let's go, Jimmy. They told me I have to return the file ASAP as it's part of the records, and they said, Jimmy, when you're messing with the airplane, don't keep the paperwork next to it and around it. But I've got a, another biplane that we should go look at while I take this over there. You, get, you gotta see this. Here is a Pitts S1. Now this is a, a true, real aerobatic airplane powered by a normal four cylinder, pumping out right around 180 to 200 horse on this thing. It does weigh twice as much, about 800 pounds, which is still very light. And this is the one you see in all the air shows that you go to, is uh, an airplane like this. And I'll be honest with you, it's built very, very similar to what you, we see out there with the baby Great Lakes. This was uh, Danny's airplane. Great job, great job, yeah, see? Simple, simple. They have another one of these hanging up on the other side, upside down over there. But here, you gotta, you gotta see this biplane here. Probably my favorite biplane of all of them that are in this museum. That's cool, that's not a biplane, but that's pretty neat. It is this Stearman right here, highly modified, different propeller on it, probably a different engine in it, much bigger, some slick wheel pants, streamlined. This is one of the most beautiful Stearmans and airplanes I've ever seen. I mean, it is loaded out. Let's see what kind of engine it's got in it. Uh, 985, that's a, yeah, that's, Good size engine, fantastic. Let's take a look up in the cockpit. Oh yeah. I was told that this was owned by an astronaut and was flying only one year ago. So I think we need to talk them into uh, getting this thing back out there, making sure it stays in the air so it doesn't get permanently grounded. Fly from the back seat. It's a very well-built, airplane oh yeah radios it's even got some instrument navigation stuff wow this is full on and smoke system front passenger seat up here there's just so much like ADD is happening all over the place in here you got twin kerosenes right here nice space heaters those work ejection seat a bell. Oh, that's from the ship. Oh, the USS Bunker Hill. Whoa, that's cool. And uh, it looks like it may have been, huh. I'll we'll have to read up, put in the comments, what do you know about the USS Bunker Hill and the ship's bell here? Something, I haven't taken time to read that yet, but that is Pretty neat. Ha! Now it's time for the review. Ha, da, 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 da. 
Oh, it's a four cylinder. Whoa, that's crazy. I thought it was a two cylinder from looking at the front because the bulge, there are four cylinders in this thing. Wow. Compression ratio, 6.3. Ooh, look at them tractor mags. <gasps> oh. Un unhooked, okay. We'll have to figure that out. Uh, there's some oil, cobwebbage. Okay, there's your gascalator right there. That thing's kind of like a separator. All right, let's pull these plugs and see what we got. Well, we got to do the, uh, you know, the arm compression check to see if this thing's got any compression. Hasn't had fuel in it in a very long time. Keys off. Ooh, okay. Let's see. Here comes one. Okay. All right, not too bad. Another one, I can hear it. Okay, remember 75 horse, not expecting a lot, but there is some resistance, that's a good sign. I am waiting to hear a click though. So unless that little thing, that, I'm not sure if that's gonna work. I mean, it's got, I'm digging it. Check the oil. See, there's oil in it. Oh, that's been on there a minute. Oh, that is sticky honey. Oh, that is turned back into a dinosaur. Look at that. Wow. Hmm. Yeah, that's really old oil. <laughs> I'm almost afraid, do we add oil to it or do we just kind of send it? Six hours? I think I'm gonna add a quart or two just to give it a little life. Oh, oh I wish you could smell this. It smells, smells like gun oil almost at this point. And it's got the tackiness of very hot honey. I can't imagine a more beautiful thing. It actually smells really good. Okay, Jimmy. In honor of it being in a museum, we got some oil from the museum. Uh, I see a date here, 1991. Ironically, the oil that's in it is newer than the oil I'm getting ready to put in it. What do you think? You think we'll hear some life out of this thing? I mean, it's got good compression. Been inside for a number of years. It's only got six hours on everything. I honestly think this should be good. I have noticed one downside. There's no battery or starter on this one, so we get to man up and you know do that with it. Uh, and there's just me here today, so we're gonna have to go go get some help from somebody. I was getting ready to point you at that down there, but then I noticed. There's like, duh! Wait, is that the wind or is that like alive still? That's just the wind. <laughs> Gross. Ugh. Gross. Okay, we gotta see if that thing moves right there. That goes through the carburetor. Let me know if it moves. Okay, I see. Okay. All right, find me that way. Whew. These are, uh, they've been there a while. Yeah, 1970, I could absolutely see that. All right, got some champion spark plugs. All right. A little dirty, but okay. It looks moist in there, like they may have sprayed some oil in it. And I and I will say that 
This airplane has gotten so much attention parked out back here where the cars can drive back and forth. And uh, <laughs> I started about three hours ago and I think probably 10 people or so cars and everything have come, come by and stopped and wanted to check it out and see a picture. So whoever gets this airplane is gonna get a little attention grabber of an airplane, uh, that's for sure. You know what? We're just gonna put this bad boy right back in there. And like that. And like that. That's my confidence level. What's the odds that there's any brake fluid in this? Oh, that's all kind of gummy. Oh. I mean, it's past the little thing in there. Huh. It's got red in it, though. Never could find the keys. And there's no starter on it, so all we have to do is this. If you ever want to steal an airplane, all you got to do is pull that off. That's it. This one, and now, oh, look, they're both tied together. Are you serious? And they're grounded right there permanently. What on earth? Okay, I'm gonna see if I can do this. I uh, discovered that in between there, in those little round things, there's the numbers on those little holes and they put numbers on the little pieces of tape here. So that was really helpful. So you just pop off that little thing pop off that wire and then if you listen really really closely you should be able to hear a little pop and that's sparking so if I did this all correctly we should be able to hear some spark pop 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 yes we were hearing some sparkage. Sweet! Magnetos are working. That stuff's working. It's got compression. Now, I'm going to go put some gas in it. And we're going to see just how much fuel is going to leak out of this thing. So, yes. We got a real gas can, finally. A normal one and not the... Ugh, the other kind, we got a normal good gas can. Ching! Now, going in looking for the fuel cutoff bottom of the gas tank down here, I noticed that little lever right there. And then I followed that little thing up, the little cable, and it comes up to this right here, which I thought was the mixture cutoff, but it's not. It is the fuel cutoff going to the bowl outside so that tells me so see watch when I move it that cuts the fuel off going to that whole system out here so unfortunately that fills up with gas and goes into the carburetor the carburetor fills up with gas so that means when I pull that cut off it has to burn and run through all of this gas before the engine can turn off because I disconnected these and normally this is how you would turn the uh, engine off you, with your key, just dunk, dunk, off. So, um, okay. So then what I'm going to have to do maybe is just do that, I guess. But I have to do it to both of them. Hmm. I'm going to have to think about this one for a minute. Because if this thing runs away, like, whoa, decides to just go crazy, I don't have a way to turn it off once it turns on. Hmm. Something I haven't done is look and just dig through, maybe hopefully by some miracle 
somebody pulled the key out and it just dropped down in there or something. So fingers crossed, I'm gonna dig through this airplane just to see if, okay, let's see if we can't find keys. They gave us three unnamed keys. So we're gonna see if these can do anything for us whatsoever. Do you have, I mean, I doubt it. I don't even know if these are gonna fit in there. Oh. Actually fit in there though, that's kind of amazing. Nope. Oh. Well, so that one, that one fits in there. Huh. Okay, so we know what kind of key fits in it. Let's see if we can't find any more. As a special treat, I uh, had a viewer, Jim, he heard that somehow I ate our MREs or something, or something about an MRE I'm not sure of, but he stopped by, said hi. He's a U-2 pilot, and uh, you were part of the Stealth 117 program. It, well, we can't talk about that because uh, it never officially it. existed safety wise safety wise yeah. uh, u2 pilot yeah. talking about flying at 73,000 feet yeah and his indicated airspeed was what 63 knots 65 i think in the old <laughs> the a model the a model yeah. and his ground speed was 400 and something knots 410 well yeah it's just the it guy's a, a legend and his name is jim so you know he's got to be a good guy oh man so hey Thank you uh, oh, yeah. for the MRE. I think we're gonna cook this bad boy up for lunch today. Okay. We're gonna see, we got Southwest style beef and black beans. Yeah, well good, I hope you enjoy it. And, and certainly been entertaining being around you for a while. Thank Appreciate you so it. much. Yeah, he yeah. even came out to the movie we had here the other day. So yeah, that was, that was pretty, great, pretty that was neat. great. All right, Grizzly, this is for you right here. Let's dig in. Dry hands, there we go. Boom, you got that and you take Bam. Let's see what we got. Oh yeah. Here we go. We got your beef and black beans. Boom. There's that. Mixed fruit. Score. Come on, be jalapeno cheese. Duh, just regular cheese spread. That's all right. Tortillas. Oh, yes. Chipotle tortillas. Some turkey nuggets. That sounds suspicious, okay. Didn't know turkeys had nuggets. Is that like chicken nuggets? Hmm. And what we got? Marble pound cake? Dude, military is living large, man. We got pound cake. And then we got the instant cappuccino. All right. Our heater pack. We'll get our beans cooking, and then we'll spoil our dinner with the rest of this. While we're waiting on this to cook, we're gonna put some gas in there and see just how much of it leaks out on the ground. Great. So the trick is you put water in the bottom, right there. Do not overfill, they're not kidding about that. And then you shake it a bunch and you get whatever is in there, touches water and it gets really super duper hot. You lean it up against a rock, like that. And about 10 minutes later, you have a warm, toasty meal. We got our like homie, water jug. Okay, just a little bit. Hold okay. that. And then you put your sleeve on like so. And then I shake mine around a bunch to get the water on all of those little packets, whatever that is. And a minute here, it'll start steaming and reacting and we'll give that a minute. Set it up against a rock or something. There you go. Cheese-like substance spread. And it's basically easy cheese in a can. What was your favorite MRE? if you're in the military. Some of you guys are old enough to have rations where you had to get a little P38. And... Oh, look at that. 
do not eat. Right. Little, uh, oh wait, gotta say grace. Thank you Lord Jesus for letting us do this crazy fun stuff and getting to do this for a living. That's pretty awesome. And for pro providing this food-like substance. Amen. That's pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. Tortilla tastes like a tortilla. I'm probably not gonna poop for a week now. That's fine. Ingredients not in regular cheese. <laughs> Beans and whatever is in that package to cook. Let's see how much of a fuel leak we're gonna be dealing with here. Let me know as soon as fuel starts dumping out from behind here, that way I can stop pouring. Hey look, and a normal fuel can. Open, and a vent breather. Done. Take off. Oh yeah. Check that out. That's the fuel. So as the fuel goes up, it goes whoop, and that tells you how much fuel you have in there. Ah, just a simple little float. All right, let's add just a little tiny bit. Any leaking yet? No? Okay, I'm gonna go turn the fuel on. Let me know. All right, here goes. Any leaking? Oh yeah, I see it right there, shoot. Let me show you what I'm looking at. That is dripping from there and from that thing, the gas collator. It looks like it's on the back wall back there, so I don't know if it's the fitting or if it's the, the gasket on top. I can't rightly tell. You notice that hose that it's got right there, that blue one, we'll take this cowling off and we'll use our fancy dancy adapter that we had to use on the glass air for this one. And we'll bypass all of that stuff. Let's get this thing off and let's get our fuel, external fuel tank, funky Jimmy's World special system set up. Let's go check on our beans. Is it bubbling yet? Oh yeah, it's getting toasty warm. Nice, a few more minutes. They had the spark plugs unhooked in here too. Okay, come on. Lots of spider webs. They had those disconnected as well. So it wouldn't have started very well. Lots of spider webs though. So here's what we're gonna do. We've got our connection. We'll unhook it from here and we'll hook our other one to it and it'll go whoop to a gas can sitting over here with a little pump to get fuel into it. And I'm just gonna pump enough to fill this bowl up because again, I have no way to turn it off once it gets started because on this airplane, which is different than a lot of other airplanes, there's only one lever for the gas to go vroom, 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 but not another one to adjust the mixture. Because normally on a normal airplane, you have two knobs, one for the throttle, which is this one, to make it go faster or slower, and another one for the mixture that you can then pull all the way back to cut the fuel off altogether. But this is a uh, much, much older style carburetor that does not have that option. So because of hot wiring, the magnetos, once these start sparking, you can't turn it off with the switch. These are always gonna be sparking until there's no more fuel to burn. So that's kind of the risk we're running here is hot wiring it once it starts, it'll just burn whatever fuel you've got in there. So you better be ready for that. Now, Jimmy, what are you doing trying to start that airplane up with this wall right behind you and all the museum stuff in that glass there? Well, it's okay because we're gonna move it. One hand, 
is move it over here. Instead, I'm gonna park it here next to all the other player planes, so that way if this one does catch fire, we're just gonna take them all out with me. Yeah, you know, what, what could possibly go wrong? Definitely gonna need to put some weight on the back of this, because I have no idea about the weight and balance if we spin and this thing is gonna go wham, bam, or something like that, I don't know. Throw some weight in the back, chalk the tires, put our gas can rig thing up there, go find some other poor soul to man the throttles and then I'll man up and throw this thing. Uh, you know, just thinking about all that, I've worked up an appetite. Let's see what turkey nuggets are. Still waiting for this thing to finish cooking. Oh yeah, you can hear it bubbling and it's not actually all that hot. I don't know what I did wrong. Turkey nuggets. Oh, that's got a glaze on it. That's, it's very shiny. Smells like beef jerky should smell. A little dry. I don't like that. It's like that mental game placebo effect. It's, it's got the smell of jerky, even the, a, a slight taste of jerky, but that ain't jerky. <laughs> that is definitely a turkey nugget. Let's eat some mixed fruit. Hey, that looks like old fruit cocktail. Check that out. Honestly, it probably looks the same coming in as it does going out. It's kind of your, your basic philosophy when it comes to MRE field rations. Beverage base cranberry grape. Nice. It's like Gatorade. Slightly more brown than I would anticipate. Again, just don't read the uh, ingredients. It's not bad. Bam. Fruit, mixed fruit and heavy syrup. Winner. Turkey nuggets, freaking gross. Blech. Yeah, we're, all right, beans, are you done yet? No. All right, we got battle to fight here. We can't wait any longer. Tear mark. Got to pull it off. Whoop. That is still cold. <laughs> the smell is exactly what you think it smells like. Look at that. Bon appetit. Surprisingly good. That does not taste like what it looks like. I can taste the uh, chili powder in it. I wish I had the chipotle tortillas. That would have made it really good. Looks disgusting, don't look at it. That was like the odd wall of superfood juices. It looks like pond scum, but it's actually quite delicious. Marble pound cake. Now I've got pretty high expectations, because if I'm honest, they have one of these that's cornbread that's ridiculously good. Like, I would go buy that cornbread at the store. Here's your pound cake. Not quite a pound. 100%. A little dry. Okay, it's a lot dry. It's like eating flour. But, flavor's on point. That's like cinnamon or something right there. Now, in the Air Force, we don't rock or anything like that. So we never got super hungry and worked up a real appetite. Like the Army guys. You guys, part of your basic training is rucking and stuff like that, and we're like, no thanks. Okay, well, how many throws do you think it's gonna be to get that thing started? 1997. I think it'll start. 
we've seen crazier stuff start. All right, so let me walk you through what we've got going on here. We uh, took off that fuel line. We put in our homemade adapter fuel line. Got my made in China bubble thing here. We're just gonna fill this part of the carburetor, it's the bowl, that way it has to run out of gas once it gets started. So I don't wanna put a lot of gas in there. So we're just gonna do that and then that's as much gas as that'll be in there. So then once it runs out of gas, it'll run out of gas. That's, that's my thought process. Tire shocks. We got weight in here, battery down there, my toolbox right here to try to keep the tail down a little bit since I can't find anything to tie it to. And I don't want to set anything on this back here, it's fabric. I was thinking about setting my toolbox up there, but ah, I was afraid it would tear the fabric. So that's where that's at. Now for the fuel, here's what I'm thinking. We're gonna try using some math and physics. Hooked it there, the line goes up. So the fuel will only be this deep when I disconnect this from the fuel tank. We're gonna prime it with that into the fuel there and then fill it and then disconnect it and tie this off somewhere. Ah, this is, yeah, such a bad idea. So in theory, we should be able to pump gas from here over to there. Oh, there it goes. All right, here we go. Oh yeah, pouring out all over the place, perfect. Good. All right, let's try that again. This time, we'll use a fuel clamp. Oh, and it leaks just as well, good. Oh, oh, we got a massive week out of the carburetor. Oh, that is, that's a lot of fuel. Okay, that's coming right out of the carburetor. No spark plugs in the top. No, I'm kind of wondering if I just overfilled it and it pushed the fuel through the needle and seat. Thankfully, it's not into the engine. It overflowed into the air box down here and is just coming out of the bottom. So that's, that's that. But my concern, if we had a backfire, that's right on top of that fuel with it leaking on the ground right there. So I think I'll, you don't know if they have any floor dry in there, do you? Oil absorbent? We've got a small puddle of fuel coming out of the carburetor air box right there. I think what happened was I just tried to squeeze a little too much juice into the, into the box there. I'm gonna find something to throw on that. And because the exhaust is right over top of that, so if we get a backfire, it's gonna hit that and then boof and go up. It would make for an epic video, but since I don't actually own this airplane and I have no intention on buying it, I don't want to buy the airplane. So we're gonna, we're, yeah, we're gonna, yes. Yep, mm-hmm. Fuel leak has stopped. We kind of got that wrapped up where it needs to be. You know, safety first. All right. Put the spark plugs back in and remember the the prop it's live right now so it can spark at any moment and there is definitely fuel here so i'm gonna yeah just kind of stay clear of that as we do this and really even with these top spark plug wires disconnected theoretically it could start because now i've plugged the hole 
for the compression. So if there was a spark inside there, and if the stars were aligned, then it could, could go. Watch me being all nervous, and this is the one plane that doesn't start after all this. That, that would make more sense. I also noticed that they clocked the, uh, the propeller so that it clicked or you know went past the top dead center near the bottom, which is not good. So you want to have the propeller so that whenever it goes past the top dead center, the point of spark, it's right about here. Yeah, right about here not way down here where I think it is. Okay, so spark plugs are in, that's tied off. We've got oil in it. We got fuel in the thing. All right, so now that's wide open and off. Fuel cutoff is here, there's no mags. Uh, enlist the help of a uh, gentleman. Oh, he ran away. So if this thing does start up and for some reason catches fire, we're just gonna film it because we have no way to shut it down once it does start. If I haven't mentioned that about a thousand times already. Why do I do this stuff? Yeah, just keep fingers and toes away. And I'm gonna be in front of it because there's wires and if this thing does do something, I'm going back that way. Yeah, I mean, we put it just off of idle on throttle. So if it does start, it shouldn't run away it should idle you know be close to idle but if i'm honest with you we have no earthly idea what's going to happen and that's that's what could possibly go wrong and the spruce goose is right over there so we can if it has enough fuel in it to get through the door into there we can that i don't want to think about that video all right you ready and uh can i get a clear prop See, it's way down there. Okay, can I get a clear prop? Nothing. Gosh, I'm so nervous. Clear the props. Clear prop. Nothing. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Squirt, squirt, squirt. Oh, there it goes. Yes. <sighs> okay. Smell the ether? Nice. <sighs> Clear prop. Woo! Nice work! <laughs> Sounds okay. Wow! We have to wait for it to run out of gas. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we're here until it runs out of gas. Uh, yeah. Well, put in the comments what's your guess on how long this thing is going to run before it runs out of gas. Up, up, up. Oh, there it goes. Woo! Good job. Nice job, Jim. We, we may have to blur his face out because he was involved in some very uh, top secret stuff. You know, so you, you've never seen him. He doesn't, right? There, there he goes. Oh, that's fantastic. Good job. Hey, oh, now we just need to find a key. I honestly think this airplane could fly again. I agree. I think so. It's built really well. It's actually in remarkably good condition. The motor sounded pretty good. Uh, definitely needs, you know, some refreshing and touching up because it's been 20 something years, 1997. So whatever that math adds up to. But I think this airplane could fly again. Unfortunately, I've got my hands full with this glass air, I bought that. This one can't fly again because of legal reasons. You can see that video over there. And I bought a Lance Air on that side over there that we are gonna be flying. 
did not buy that. That's somebody's project that they can deal with. But this, I think this thing could fly again. I almost forgot. Celebration Mocha Cappuccino Instant Powder. Mmm. Doesn't, don't look at it. Cheers. Thank you for your service.